Hi there, it's Sue Grant Marshall reading matters on radio today, 14.85 a.m. And on the line from Cape Town, I have Hedy Lampett, who wrote that fascinating, so riveting book, The Trouble with My Aunt. And she now, well, no, she has for quite a while, taught writing, how to write novels, how to write um, memoirs, whatever. Welcome, Hedy Lampert. How are you doing? I'm very well, Sue, and lovely to chat to you again. Um, yes, so um, I I coach uh, would-be novelists and memoirists, and uh, uh, I work for a company called Now Novel, and, uh, yeah, we, we coach writers all over the world because we offer an online service. Yes, yes. And, Hedy, your book, now I'm trying to remember the trouble with my aunt. When, that was two, two years ago. When did I interview you about that? That would have been in 2020. The book was published in February 2020, just before lockdown. So all the launches and... Uh, oh, yes. Chats were cancelled, unfortunately, because, yes. you know, don't have to remind you what the pandemic stole from us. No. But, uh, yeah, I mean, at least the book doesn't go off and it's still getting five stars on goodreads.com, which is great. And um, it's available online uh, on, on Amazon or through me or through the, it can be ordered through all the bookshops. So, yeah, it's uh, three years ago now, Good but uh, still doing nicely. You're a hard time lies. And to order yes. through you, let's give that address now. Hedy. Oh, yes. Uh, just really Hedy, uh, Hedy Lampert Books. So H-E-D-I L-A-M for Mary P for Peter E-R-T Books dot Coza. Uh, that is my website and you'll be able to find all the details of how to get the book from Hedy Lampert Books. Okay. Because for Aspirant writers, memoirists, whoever wants to learn, I suggest, if you don't mind me saying so, Hedy, that they read your book because it is such a well-written book. And I think it gives a feeling of how you could write a book that is an interesting mixture of a novel and a memoir. You, you've managed to novelize your life. Let's put it that. You're absolutely right. It, it is there, there, there is um, there is a genre called the new autobiography, and and really it is a sort of a, a fictionalized autobiography, which sounds like a paradox. But um, you know, when when you when you take the devices that novel writers use in terms of creating drama, suspense, and um, uh, incorporating dialogue and certainly showing more than telling, there are a lot of things we as memoirists can learn from novelists and indeed even from filmmakers. And when you incorporate those things, uh, you, you, you can add elements of fiction and still very much tell a story that is hard-hitting and largely true. Um, so that is, that is what I did with The Trouble With My Aunt and, and I incorporated quite a lot of science and genetics too, as well as romance and humor and nostalgia. So um, I think it hits quite a lot of beats. Wow, Hedy. And tell me something. How do you, you know, when you have your publisher, which you are able to help with as well to a certain extent, what, uh, how, what is that book called? You mean what genre does it fit yes, into? Yes. Okay, so that's a very tricky question, Sue. Um, and and the thing with 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 online uh, platforms such such as Amazon, there are loads and loads of different keywords and and genres that that needs to fit into. I've it could be historical fiction, it could be family, it could be mothers and daughters, it could be special needs. I really do struggle with that, and so. It's important when you are marketing your own work to try and find as many keywords as you can uh, that 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 bring readers in, and we certainly can help with that. Uh, it, it, it's 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 a function of our coaching. There is a publishing section uh, 
mm-hmm. that that is very very uh, comprehensive and and we look into the marketing and self publishing as well. Yes, that's so interesting. So let's get back <clears throat> to you personally, Hedy Lampert, with your book, The Trouble with My Aunt. What? I mean, where did this come from, The Trouble with My Aunt? Did you want to write um, a sort of a memoir and then decided you would set it round your aunt or did it start with your aunt and then you decided, yeah, you were going to write an, um, a memoir? Yes. So, look, it was, I mean, I didn't have to look very far in terms of my family history for material because it was all there. Um, I had, you know, growing, growing up in a rather mad Jewish family in Johannesburg, we were never short of humor and drama. Yes. And, uh, there, there were many stories I could have told, but my, my mother's sister had, um, a, a, a genetic, uh, condition called fragile X syndrome. Yes. And it's actually more common than people realize. And, uh, she, uh, she, she, she just, she never went to school. She was different. Uh, she, she was also lovely. She, she laughed very easily. She also cried very easily. She was rather entertaining, but also she was a lot of work. And, um, my mother grew up duty bound to her. And I watched this and, and then uh, my mother prayed virtually every day that, that my aunt should die first so that, Nobody else would have to look after her, yes. but that didn't happen, you know. And I did land up looking after her, and in a way, that was what my mom left to me was the legacy of uh, looking after my aunt. Um, and so, and 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 there's of course the relationship of my grandmother and my aunt, and my grandmother and me, and my grandmother and my mother, and it's a convoluted uh, set of circumstances where three generations meet, and it's into twined with love and duty and sisterhood and motherhood and also uh, the, the, raw, the raw reality and the brutal truth that it's not actually easy living yeah. with a special needs person and we don't make any bones about that. Yeah. But um, there is also humor and quite a lot of interesting genetics, as I said. So I had the story and I wrote it all down and after doing various courses and trying to get it as best as I could, I realized that I still only had about 30,000 words. And as a novelist, you know, you need at least 70 to 80,000. And so I realized I had to actually draw in some drama that I had to make up. And there was fiction that had to be incorporated. And, and that's what I did. And that's why it became more than a memoir. It became a novel. Oh, Right. And Hedy, so maybe listening to what you, what can I say, what you went through um, approaching your book, I suppose, and this would be advice to anyone who's thinking of writing a memoir, a novel, um, a book, a biography, or, you know, whatever, is work out <laughs> what you want to write about. Yeah, for me, the structure was, was, was key. I spent 15 years pantsing and not really getting anywhere. And when I finally s- sat down and put a structure down, uh, it flew. I knew what I needed to write. I sat down. I took two months off, off my other freelance work and I just got the book done in about eight weeks. Wow. Um, certainly, I, I, I reworked it after that, and, yes. and I, I, I proofed it thousands of times. <laughs> but uh, the, the fundamental breaking the back of the first draft was 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 a shorter process once I decided I knew what to do. And, wow. and um, I I have all sorts of methods of, of teaching my uh, my mentees. Uh, how to get that structure down, how to unblock all the the issues that 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 are stopping them from actually writing. So coaching becomes a lot more than just writing advice. It's it's a person who sits there with you and brainstorms your ideas with you and and listens to all the issues that you have around not writing. And then once you get that writing down, we level up that writing with you and we make sure you are writing the best possible book you can write. And that's that's what we at Now Novel 
uh, do as, as coaches. And I personally, um, I customize my coaching to my students' needs. So I will pick up whatever it is they're struggling with. I'm going to give you some sort of exercise or some sort of advice or some sort of structure to break through that until we can get to the next level. Gosh, that's interesting. So give me an example of, you know, someone who signs up for your course and they, you know, they either tell you, Eddie, I've got writer's block or I can't develop this idea or whatever the case might be. How do you move from that initial point or place of departure? I have the advantage of using a lot of creative writing experience. I've been on many courses and I take, I have compiled the, the most effective uh, exercises and concepts uh, learnt along the way. And yes. I just, I can't explain it to you, but I just always know what to do with it. <laughs> and we'll do a free write and suddenly there'll be a breakthrough. I might get them to, 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 to suddenly to write a poem which brings out things and they, and they have a wow moment. We have so many penny dropping moments on this course. It's such a privilege and an honor. Fundamentally, I see myself as a catalyst for other people's creativity and I will find ways of asking certain questions that bring it out, uh, or getting them to do a free writing exercise or setting another exercise. Uh, there are, oh, I, there, there's so many different ways and for everybody it's, it, 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 it's, it's going to be a different process. But, but, um, I've been doing it long enough that I feel confident enough to, to catalyze anybody to create a glory. Gosh, that is, that is such exciting news, Hedy, because there's so many people who do want to get down their lives, yes. other people's lives, or write a novel. And, of course, South Africa, with its extraordinary history, its color in the true sense of that word, we're not a boring nation. <laughs> and, no, not at all. Yeah. And, and so to hear that coming from you is, is absolutely um Terrific. Now, Hedy, in terms of, I'm jumping around a bit, in terms of publishing a book, a novel, a memoir, whatever the case might be, how do you or do you help an author, a writer with that as well? Um, now, Novel does run a self-publishing course, which is uh, its own uh, com its own complete set of modules and um, it runs for many, many weeks and um, that would be available if you look at the website, which is nownovel.com mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's more information there. I personally don't run that course, but it is, I have, uh, I have been on the course and it is very comprehensive. It involves marketing and uh, uh promotion and, and, and all sorts of things. Yes. Uh, so I would highly recommend that. So I'm chatting at Sue Grant Marshall on Reading Matters Radio today to Hedy Lampert, who with Romy Sommer has, well, yeah. That, well, I'm a co Romy is, is another of our coaches yes. and we, uh, we both coach for nownovel.com. Yes. Romy is a romance writer, a very, um, um, well-published romance writer. Yes. In fact, now where is it? On, oh, yes. Romy founded Rosa, R-O-S-A, which is Romance Writers Organization of South Africa, which has become right. pretty well-known. I think they had a conference or were part of a conference recently. And... um she also discovered a love of mentoring aspiring writers. Tricky question coming up, <laughs> Eddie. Um, yes. What do you do when it becomes incredibly clear to you that the person who signed up for your course and has started writing really 
just simply cannot write. Mm. That has happened, Sue. Um, in that case, you know, if, if we we do, you know, sometimes we 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 have people whose language is. His first language is not English, yeah. um, and unfortunately, their the, the English is, is really not up to scratch, and the grammar is just awful, and it's 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 kind of a waste of their time. So they they would need to rather get their English up to scratch, and uh, and then maybe start again. Um, I think you know we we can offer ghost writing. Um, we. I have, yeah, I have been in that situation and, and, uh, we are honest with the, the client and, um, you know, we suggest rather trying to get the English better and, or they really have a great story to tell looking into ghostwriting. Ah, oh, and does that mean, um, Hedy, that you have ghostwriters that you can phone and say, this is a terrific subject matter? But the writer's first language isn't English. Could you write it? Do Do you have that? Yes, we we, we can arrange. We, we can certainly quote on that, and it's uh, it's it's part of the service that now novel will offer. And uh, yes, it's it's a comprehensive set of services. Gosh, Hedy, how exciting! Well, um, it so, is very so so <laughs> people. Um, listening who want to, you know, to write that novel, that biography, that autobiography can get hold of Hedy and or Romy by writing to now.novel.com. No. Now.novel.com. Now is it, novel. Sorry, see, so with, with whatever they've given you on the press release, um, I don't know if it's now. Dot, oh, no. It's just now novel. I, think dot I com. probably. Put that in. So it's now novel, N O W N O V E L dot com. Hedy. Now novel dot com, yes. Yeah. Um, in terms of fiction and, and, um, biography, autobiography, whatever the case might be, what are you getting? What are most of your aspirant writers wanting to do? I mean, I've heard that memoirs are now kind of top of the list when it comes to bookstores selling books. Am, am I right? Or, or what's the story? I gather there is a big appetite for memoirs. I personally enjoy a memoir and I love historical fiction too. Um, so, you know, we, we, we have a lot of different coaches at Now Novel. I I tend to be the go-to person for the memoir and the historical fiction, uh, and fiction generally. Um, Romy obviously will do romance, and 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 but even uh, you know we, a lot of our students are into science fiction, magical realism, uh, fantasy, young adult. Uh, so we, we have a wide range of, of students because they come from all over the world, and um, they they. I've had, I have students in their early 20s, and I have students who are approaching their 90s. No. Um, so it's never too late <laughs> to, uh, to start. Oh, I love that. I have, because yeah, I have quite a lot of senior uh, students. Do you? Because quite a few yeah. of the people who listen to my program, Reading Matters, um, are senior, slightly older, older, whatever you want to say. So that is heartening news. And I suppose you could also say, Hedy, that they write with, from whatever word you want to use, experience and wisdom, which younger people, although they might have, which they do, incredible imaginations, um, that sense of knowledge and wisdom does tend to seep through the words, doesn't it? Uh, in some people, you know, sometimes I have to really draw it out of them because they they, they haven't learned to express themselves um, yeah. in a fully sensorial way or maybe they are quite edited because, you know, we all have this very, very loud internal editor. 
And so sometimes an older person needs quite a lot more chipping away at to to get to the depth of uh, of what it is they want to say. But Sue, I've said it before, everybody has a novel that must either come out on paper or be surgically removed. Um, <laughs> you know, we've all got a book in us. That's so, such uh, an interesting thing because yeah. You know, as a as a rookie journalist, I was told everyone has a story. There is no such thing as a boring person. And I'd be sent off on an interview or to dig around. This was in the early days to find out what the actual story was. And I used to sometimes think there isn't a story here. And yet you dig deeper and there is. But it, I, I wouldn't have taken that into books, um, Hedy, that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah no one, I, I just, I, for me, a, a blessing that, that, that I always give is may you always have a story to tell because more than anything, I, I think, I think boredom is, is a curse. So one must have a story to tell. <laughs> so. I love that, Hedy Lampert. That's extraordinary. So going back, to your book, The Trouble with My Aunt. Um, now, just remind me, was your aunt alive when you wrote that book or had she gone? She was alive. She was alive. She was in her 80s, um, but she couldn't read, really. I mean, my, oh. my, my grand still tried to teach her to read. I, I would come upon them or sneak up and they wouldn't know I was there. And, and <laughs> um, my aunt would be trying to read from an Enid Blyton, one of my old Enid Blyton books yes. that my gran had fortified by covering with newspaper and, and glad wrap. <laughs> and, um, and I, I was like, Oh, that's where all my, see, my Mallory Towers, um, <laughs> books went. Yeah. I thought I'd lost them because they were so precious to me. And she, she was trying to, you know, read all those years later, but she'd never do it in public, only in, in the bedroom with yes. my gran. Um, yes. So it, 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 it was hard. So she was still alive. Uh, everybody else, however, was not. So it was easier to write yes. that book because the others were departed. And my aunt, I simply said to her, you know, if anybody says to you, I'm writing a book about you, you can just say, oh, that's nonsense because my name's not Violet because um, I had changed her name. Yes. And she said, oh, yes, fine. You know, she, she yes. just accepted that because yes. I was worried that she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm writing a book. And she said, what's it about? I said, it's about you. And she said, oh, no, darling, don't. <laughs> so, so I had to say, well, you know, you know. <laughs> so, so why I asked you that question is for <clears throat> the people who are writing autobiographies, how careful do you have to be when, what can I say, half? Huh? Let's go for half. The family is still around. Oh, Sue, that's such a difficult one. And I mean, it, it certainly dogs many, many writers, not just biographers or autobiographers, because even people writing fiction fear that somebody they know will think that, that they are based on, that a character yes. has been based on them. Yes. Um, and so you have, number one is bravery. I think you have to be very brave to be a writer, to be an author. Yes. Um, but like I said, for me, it was easier because they had all passed away. And I'm not quite sure how I would have dealt with it had my mom still been alive, had my grand still been alive. I mean, I even worried that at one point when I made something up in the book, yes. I felt so bad about it because I wasn't used to writing fiction. And I, I, I remember saying, sort of, I'm muttering a little prayer up to him and saying, Granny and Grandpa, forgive me for making that up. But it's, I had to, it's part of the book. I needed some drama. Um, and, and you feel bad, but there isn't really an answer. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that there isn't an answer, but yes. there isn't. Yes. And so I, I'm imagining that the questions I'm asking you, Hedy Lampert, um, are ones that when you speak to aspirant authors, writers, they ask you these sort of questions. And so you have to answer in the way you're answering me now. Am I right? 
Yes, and you know there are other things. So you can obviously you put a disclaimer at the beginning of a book that says that any uh, yes. resemblance to people living or dead is unintentional. Uh, you could change uh, genders. You can change names. Obviously, uh, you could you could switch time around and and just try and make the people less identifiable and be. You, you just have to be more creative and a lot more clever about it. Yes. Uh, to yes. to sort of twist things. Yes. But uh, certainly, libel exists, and you don't want to be sued. So no. you do. You either need to get permission. Yes. Or you've got to take your chances, and uh, yeah, it's. That's up to the person. So I, I have a writer at the moment who, do, his brother was very unhappy that she was writing the book, so she left him out of her story as if he doesn't exist. Gosh, that's uh, that's incredible. Because I mean, you would think that the brother wouldn't, I don't know, wouldn't want to be left out. That's yeah. Well, that's that's what she decided to do. She needed to tell her story. And um, it's, it's a beautiful book. And, uh, yeah, so she just left them out. <laughs> hey, do you like <laughs> that? that is so funny. Oh, I wish we hadn't come to the end of our chat. Um, I think I must get you back in some month's time, and then you can tell me about some of your writers and the experiences that you have. Oh, with yes, them. with pleasure. Because it's and so, I just wanted to... Sorry, Sue. Yes. No, it's a fascinating. Carry on, Hedy. I just wanted to say that I've given you the wrong. Uh, it's HedyLampertBooks.com, not .coza. So just okay. no spaces, H-E-D-I-L-A-M-P-E-R-T, books.com, and that's where you will find uh, how to get the trouble with my art. Uh, okay. So HedyLampertBooks, all one word, .com. Yes, yes. Yes. Oh, that's terrific. But um, and now novel dot com yes. for the writing, coaching, whatever yes. genre of book you would like to write. Yes. Um, whatever age you are. Yes. Uh, you know, we, we we can help. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Well, I've so enjoyed chatting to you again, Hedy. Are you writing a book at the moment, or no? So, I'm not. I, you know, I'm, I'm coaching so many different people and I feel like I'm carrying so many different stories in my head for yes. them. Yes. And the actual coaching is, is very, uh, fulfilling. Yes. And I'm teaching pottery and doing pottery and selling pottery. So creatively, I'm so very fulfilled at the moment. Wow. And, um, I, yes, I have a pottery studio called the throne room, as in, you know, throne, like, Yes. Um, oh, so, so, yes. so the throne room is very busy and, and it's a wonderfully creative space in Cape Town. Um, and, and my book, I still feel needs to get wings. And so yes. it, it, it's, I don't have, I don't have that other book struggling to, 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 to wriggle out of me just yet. Yes. And tell me your pottery. Uh, do you have a, a different website for that? Yes, it's called the Throne Room Pottery, and it's O W E, and that's dot coza yes. dot co dot za. The okay. Throne Room Pottery, yeah, and it's T H R O W N. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. O okay. Dot com. Dot coza dot co dot za dot coza. Oh wow! So wow! Anyone who's <laughs> going down to Cape Town. Everyone from Joburg, which is our footprint on radio today, who might be going to live in Cape Town, take that down. Throne room pottery. Yes, yes. Coza, C O Z A. The throne room, the throne room pottery. Dot yes, yes. Co dot Z A. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Hedy, you're so creative. It's incredible. Thank you for chatting to me. Thank you, Sue. It's been so lovely chatting to you and hopefully we do it again soon. Lovely, Hedy. Thank you so okay. much. So that was Hedy Lampert, who's going to teach us how to write books, particularly memoirs, how to f fictionalize your life if you want to write a book about your life. Now I'm going on to 